No. Okay, got okay. it. Got it. Okay, here we go. We're on camera now. Yeah. <laughs> Well, welcome everyone. I want to say thank you so much for, for getting together here on the same day, even though we're in very, very different parts of the world and different times. My time is very late, but I'll do my best to uh, continue sounding more or less intelligent. Um, uh, this is very casual, uh, as I mentioned, kind of what we'll do, we'll just have a chance to, it's just a chance to get together, probably the only chance we'll ever have to get together this way, and, you know, just offer a few words, I guess. Um, and so it is, it's a very casual thing, I'm sure people will be coming and going, and that's fine, and if anything happens, and something happens on your end, and you need to go, or you need something, just raise your hand or interrupt, that's perfectly fine. So again, thank you so much for, for everything, first of all, for taking part in this project to begin with. Uh, you know, it's two years ago now that I was actually in Europe. It's hard to believe two years have passed and it's really been probably more than three years since this whole project began. So. I'm just so thankful to all of you and to all the others as well who are unable to, to join us today. Um, but having this opportunity, I know some of you know each other through the forum, for example, and maybe even some of you have met some others, but for the most part, you don't know each other, which is very interesting to me because I know all of you. But the opportunity now to bring you all together, or at least many of you, is really, uh, it's very strange, but really wonderful. So I'm just happy that, that we have this, this chance to be together. Um, so first of all, I think it probably would be good uh, if we can kind of do a roll call in a way so people can know who the other people are, at least your names and where you are. So if I call your name, just, just tell me where you are and you know, rate, wave your hand and tell us where you are. Victor. All right, my name is Victor Santos. I'm calling in from Iowa in the USA, but I'm Brazilian by origin. Okay, and Deborah. So we are in the US, in San Diego. Originally from Brazil. Okay, okay. Hosam is not here yet, is he? Okay, I think Hosam is coming. Deepti, where are you? Hi, I'm Deepti. I am currently in Los Angeles, but originally from India. Okay, okay. Marissa? I'm here. Hi, everyone. I'm Marissa. Hi. I'm right now in my house in Fredericksburg, Virginia, and I've been living here in the United States since 1996, I think, um, but I'm originally from Spain. Okay, and Richard and Xing Xing. Hello. Hello. Um, Hi. We are here right now in China. I'm checking my, my Xing Xing is Chinese. Okay, they're in China. And Elzbieta. Hi everyone, uh, I'm from Poland and uh, I speak English with my kids. So I'm the family with intentional bilingualism. Right, right. Okay, Alex. Hello, I'm in Leicester in the UK. Um, I'm British and my husband Johnny is Italian. Okay, great. And Amy's here too, right? Hello, it's Amy. Um, I'm French. I call from Paris. Uh, I'm actually I'm raising my daughters in English and I'm married to Spaniards who also speak Spanish at home. Okay, Anna is not here yet. Uh, Mike is here. Hi everyone, I'm Mike and I'm from Germany and I live in Paris. My husband's French and we're raising our daughter bilingual German French. <laughs> okay. And Isabella. 
Oh, was that me, Adam? Yes. yes. Hi, I'm Isabella and I'm originally from Poland and we live in the UK in the Newark, not far from Leicester actually, Alex. So waving to you from uh, just down on the A46. <laughs> that's right, that's right. Okay, Tatiana, in the book, her name is Elena. Hello, I'm Tatiana, I'm originally from Russia. Um, and right now I am in California in San Francisco. Uh, and we're raising our kids with Russian and English and then intentionally with Spanish. Okay, and Amanda? Hi, I'm Amanda. I am currently in Washington DC area and my husband's American and I'm helping my kids to learn Mandarin Chinese. I'm originally from Taiwan with grandparents from China and my kids are learning uh, Mandarin, Spanish and speaking English as well. Okay, uh, Amelia is not here yet. So there are a few people that are not here yet. Okay, and um, I think everyone, oh, sorry, Marta Jens, go ahead. We are Marta and Jens from Ger living in Germany, but I'm from Spain and we are, um, we have three kids who are growing up bilingual Spanish German. Okay, great, great. Uh, Isabel, is there any other sort of housekeeping before we move forward? Uh, no, I, th I think we've got it all covered. I see some people are on mute, some people are not. It's completely up to you. If you want to keep your mic on, please yeah. do. If you have any background noise, you can put yourself on mute uh, during, during this party. Yeah, that's fine. It's fine to keep your microphone on. Um, uh, you know, I don't know how much exchange we can do with so many people uh, without it becoming a free for all. But um, but I think that's fine because people may want to ask questions of each other. Um, so I know you know who I am, but this video will be in places where people may not know who I am. So I suppose I should introduce myself just a little bit. So I am Adam Beck. I'm the founder of the blog Bilingual Monkeys and the forum, the Bilingual Zoo. Um, I'm also the author of this book, Maximize Your Child's Bilingual Ability, which was based uh, mostly on my own experience and certain research uh, but it was mostly my own experience as a teacher and as a parent. And the new book and what has brought us all together here is bilingual success stories around the world. So as I mentioned early on, this is about three years in the making. And uh, it was about two years ago that I spoke to all of you. And in some cases that was in person. And in some cases it was online. I wish it all could have been in person um, because those, you know, the chance to visit with families when I was traveling through Europe was really a remarkable experience for me. Um, but the whole experience itself has been really remarkable. And I'm just so happy that you could all join me in this experience. And I mean, this is something that will connect us for many years to come, isn't it? So, um, okay, what else? Well, again, probably for those that, that aren't familiar with the book, let me just read the, the description on the back. So, Bilingual Success Stories Around the World is a real life roadmap to greater success and joy for any parent raising bilingual or multilingual children written by Adam Beck in the same empowering spirit as his influential first book, Maximize Your Child's Bilingual Ability. This practical worldly wise guide features the success stories of a wide range of families and details the kinds of attitudes and actions that can enable your family to enjoy the same sort of rewarding success. The focus of this book is on the actual practice of raising children to acquire active ability in more than one language, conveyed through the revealing experiences of parents who are now succeeding admirably 
at their bilingual or multilingual aim. That's all of you. Read this book for ideas and inspiration to help you realize your own family's joyful success story. So today, you know, it's an opportunity to mark the completion of this project and to celebrate the book because it is out in the world now, as you know, and, um, and a chance just for you to share. I know it isn't possible for us to have uh, long conversations with each person, although that would be wonderful if we could, but we do have a few minutes for each person uh, where you could share something about your family or uh, your experience or your advice or your experience of this project. Anything is really fine, okay? Um, so let's see. So there are a few people I know that that can't be with us too long. And that was Victor and Deborah and Hossam, who's not here yet, and Deepthi, right? So is there anyone else that needs to leave early? And so I could ask you to speak earlier. That's okay. Okay. Hey, Adam, before we continue, let's celebrate and give a big round of applause, everybody. So I think <laughs> Because I think everybody agrees that this book uh, has come out really nice. <laughs> How do you say, okay, this is going to take, I think, five non seconds. How do you say congratulations in one of our languages? Should we do this? Congratulations to all of us into the book in a different language? Oh, that's that's very interesting. Home language. All right. Isabella, do you go first? Oh, we're not all doing it all at the same time. <laughs> uh, that's going to be hard to like pick it up. We can do it in like 20 seconds. Okay. Right, let's, let's, let's start right. with each person individually, and then we can all shout it out. So in, in Polish, we say gratulacje. And we, we also ask you if you have anything to celebrate, you know, like a bottle. I have a bottle of Prosecco waiting, so I will be drinking that later. Yay. Yeah, we can we can also <laughs> share that. I also Still have a, a little that. cake. Still. So I, I brought oh, oh, it. Oh, awesome. cake. It's called <laughs> Colin the Caterpillar. Colin the cattle, the Caterpillar. Oh, and oh, it's got his, his tail oh. off because it was <laughs> it's half oh eaten, God. but I saved some for this celebration. Uh, oh, yeah. So, gratulations. <laughs> okay, in, are we, let's continue in this way, I guess. So, in English, of course, well, we all know it's congratulations. In Japanese, it's omedito gozaimasu. Omedito gozaimasu. All right. Okay. Yeah, back. Victor? Yeah, it changes. All right. So, Deborah, are you going to say it in Portuguese? Should I save that one for you? Yeah. All yeah, right. My, so boy, I'll do... my boy will say it. Beautiful. So, I'm going to do Russian, which is one of our languages, and that's Pazdravliayu. Pazdravliayu. So, I congratulate you. Oh, wow. All of you. Okay. Let's go back this way to Alex. who? I was just like trying to quickly, sneakily double check congratulations in Italian. But, you know. <laughs> I'm pretty sure it's complimenti. Pretty sure. Okay. <laughs> I'll just I'll double check it. We'll go around someone else, and if I'm wrong, I will um, correct myself. <laughs> okay, Elzbieta. Um, well, since I'm Polish, it's also gratuluję or, or gratulacje. Since my language of choice is English, it's congratulations. And recently there's a third language in our family, which wasn't noted in your book. Uh, so, felicitaciones, Spanish. Okay. Great, <laughs> we great. are advancing. <laughs> Marta, Jens? Yeah, we have German, herzlichen Glückwunsch. And Spanish, enhorabuena. Mm -hmm. Okay, Richard, Xing Xing? <laughs> you should say congratulations in Chinese. Oh, okay. Congratulations. Okay. Diti? Yes, it's, well, it's Hindi Urdu, so Mubarako. Mubarako is a nice I love it. Okay. Tatiana? 
All of mine got stolen. Um, <laughs> Pozdravljaju in Russian. Felicidades in Spanish. Congratulations in English. And I'll throw in just for you. Gratulerar in Swedish. Wow. Oh, great. <laughs> okay, Deborah and the boys. Parabéns. So congratulations in Portuguese would be parabéns. Parabéns. Nice. Nice. Amanda? Adam, I'm going to add your name in Chinese as well, in Mandarin. So, okay. that makes me feel like it's Chinese New Year. That's how we say um, congratulations in Mandarin. Oh, Chinese. I love that. I love that. Marissa? <laughs> Marissa? Sorry, sorry. <laughs> I don't know if you what. Every single language that we kind of speak at home have already somebody has said. <laughs> But I, I normally use, uh, Tatiana said felicitaciones, I normally use enhorabuena, like Marta said. So enhorabuena. Okay. <laughs> great, great. Okay, Mikey? Well, German has already been used, so he is French. Felicitations. Okay. And Amy? Well, they will be stolen. Felicitations, yes. enhorabuena, congratulations. <laughs> That's right. That's right. Okay. Well, okay. One, two, three. Let's let out a big congratulations in all these different languages. Are you ready? One, two, three. Oh, oh, my God. God. Oh, my God. <laughs> Fantastic. Fantastic. Well, let's let's let each person have a chance to share just a little bit. And of course, there are a few people that will leave early. So let's start with those people. Um, I, I was torn whether I need to introduce each person with the little information in the book, but maybe we don't need to do it that way if you do that. I mean, the way you were doing it before, and some people were already sharing some about their family. So I won't read it. It's probably better if I just give you the opportunity to tell us a little bit about your family. And maybe you could actually tell us what number you are in the book as well. That might be useful. So can we start with Victor? Because I know Victor has to leave soon. Uh, Victor, tell us a little bit more about your family and tell us what number you are in, what story. What, Sounds which, good. Well, first of all, I want to say it is a huge privilege to be together with all of you in this book, this amazing book written by Adam that I hope is going to help many, many families around the world. I think all of us here, we are big time winners. We have proven that we don't give in to social pressure, right? When we go to a park, we're talking in a different language. People are looking weird at us. We have a goal in mind and we're go-getters. We have achieved that goal and we continue to work towards it. So first of all, I just want to see it is a pleasure to be part of that journey with you guys. Um, I'm part of family number three in the book. So that's intentional efforts empower the journey even before birth. My name is Victor Santos. I'm originally from Brazil. My wife is called Olia. She's from Ukraine. So her first language is Russian. And my two kids, Dylan and Isabella, were born in the US. And we are really, really consistent with the OPAL. So from day one, my kids are now five and two and a half. I have never spoken to them in a language that is not Brazilian Portuguese. My wife has never spoken to them in a language that is not Russian. And you know, the kids were born in the US, they go to daycare, um, Dylan started kindergarten. So they're pretty balanced trilinguals. And we are extremely proud of this. The kids love the languages. And Dylan started learning Korean. Papai, no, 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 no. Come here, come here. <laughs> fala com a mamãe, amor, fala com a mamãe. No, Vem cá, vem cá. Fala com a mamãe para te dar picolé, filhinho. Vai lá. Fala para a mamãe. Picolé ou peruri? Fala, hi. Hi. So hi. he's complaining to me that his sister in Portuguese um, pulled his hair. So hi. this takes precedence over anything else. And I bet, oh, cool. um, hang on, I bet Frank and Garrett can understand everything. Olha, filho, eles falam português também. Tá vendo? Fala. Ei, Frank. Fala oi para ele. Oi. Fala com a mamãe. Hey, Deborah. Bala com mamãe, filhinho. All right. So Dylan started learning Korean now. So that's his fourth language because he started Taekwondo and he uses Alexa. He goes to Alexa and he's like, Alexa, how do you say school in Korean? 
And he gets all this vocabulary from Alexa because I don't speak a word of Korean. And he just spits it out when he goes to Taekwondo. It's really fun. Um, I'm also the founder of Linguacious. We are a language learning company that publishes over 30 languages. I'm also a children's book writer. We publish books in 30 different languages, bilingual or monolingual. This one is bilingual in English and Portuguese. Um, Deborah, if you want a copy, I'll be more than glad to send you one because this is bilingual. The kids might enjoy it in Portuguese. And I think that's a little bit of Thank our you. story. Yeah. And, you know, we're just um, always participating on Instagram, helping other families with their questions about bilingualism. And as we all know, it's doable, but it takes a lot of grit and you can't give up. <laughs> right? And as I think it was Dalai Lama who said it, but um, yeah, I have to check my source. But the difference between failure and success is one more try. Mm. And I think all of us have gone through that path and we just kept pushing, kept pushing until we succeeded, right? And I think that's sure. the message I want to leave everybody with. So thanks for being here today. This is it. Great. Thank you, Victor. And thank you to you and your son for giving us a demonstration of living bilingualism, right? Fantastic. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Deborah, how about you? I don't know that all three of us can be in the picture, but we'll do our best here. Okay. <laughs> all right. So originally from Brazil, I've been in the US now for 14 years. Uh, married my husband about three years into my journey in uh, San Diego. And we had our two boys, wonderful boys, uh, mm -hmm. now nine and six. And uh, since um, we, you know, I, I didn't really think so much about bilingualism before I had kids. Uh, it was just natural to me to speak to them in Portuguese from the time they were in my womb. And that's how it's been since then. Um, I remember looking for a device and uh, in, in coming across Adam's book, um, Maximizer to Your Child's Bilingual Ability. And that they definitely gave me a lot more um, insight into raising my kids bilingual. At that time, Frank was almost four and he, he started replying to me in English and that made me really concerned and that's when I, uh, I started using different tools and I made it really clear to him that uh, with mama, he would have to, to speak in Portuguese only. And he understood that. And from that point on, it was, it was pretty magical because that's how it, it, that's what happened. And since then, that's, that's the model that we, we try to, uh, to use at home. And my husband is American, so he, uh, speaks to the boys in, in English. So they are, uh, they're bilingual in English and Portuguese. And we, uh, we homeschool. So we have a very unique situation in which I use English materials, not only English, but I also do some Portuguese, but mostly English, but I'm not talking to them in, in, in English. I address <clears throat> them in Portuguese. So let's say if I'm reading something in English to them, I'm still making my commentaries and uh, whatever I want to tell them in Portuguese, and that's how they they will reply to me as well. Um, so we, um, you know, I, uh, I have a sister here who's well, who's with the boys on a daily basis, uh, basically. So they are exposed to Portuguese um, for most of the day, and uh, we communicate with my my folks back in Brazil. Um, you know, we at least once a week. Yesterday we spent two hours with my mom and my stepdad on uh, um, on. Sky, no, uh, what's up? On um, WhatsApp, yeah. Um, mm -hmm. And the boys have no no trouble, you know, talking to, to them and feeling them in, you know, about things that are going on in their lives. And they also do uh, activities that, that, that bring the Brazilian culture into their lives. And um, that has truly helped, even though the classes are taught in English, uh, they show a lot of elements that will bring Brazil. Uh, into into our uh, daily routine so um that's that's i think that's the oh i'm sorry i'm not in the picture here though <laughs> that's basically it i think yes yeah. yeah oh and you're you're number 10 in i'm this sorry book, yeah. right? we are number 10, 10. oh number right 10 there. that's right yeah. that's there you right go. yeah the title is the strong actions and expectations sustain the minority language Thank you, Deborah. Thank you so much.
Uh, Hossam is not here right I now. Think, uh, Adam, excuse me, I oh. think Frank wants to say a little something. Oh, please, go ahead. So he wants me to share that he's been writing lots of, uh, non, uh, lots of fiction stories in Portuguese. And this is the third story that he writes, and we are, you know, we are compiling them for, from for, for now. I don't know exactly what we're gonna be doing with them, but uh, for now we are sharing with my folks back in Brazil, my sister, and just enjoying them in our inner circle here. But who knows what we might do with the, his stories? He really enjoys writing, and he's uh, he's been doing it now for for uh, for some time. Deborah, you should self-publish them. Get in yeah. touch yeah. with me. I'll help you guys get it out there. You know. Well, oh, thank you. Yeah. Thank you, Victor. Yeah. We we stay in contact for sure. I think that's great. I mean, in the book itself, Nelly is not here with us today. She is story number eighteen in the book, and she published uh, her daughter's book about chickens. Her daughter was raising chickens, and so she was able to work together with her daughter on you know, creating and publishing and then sharing this book with family. So that maybe that's something that you can consider doing in your family too. So that would be very sweet. Yeah. Thank okay. you for letting me here. Yeah. Congrats Thank to all you. of you. These stories are really amazing, very inspiring. And I, I feel like Victor said, I feel that's a privilege for our family. We feel like our journey is so small sometimes compared to some of these other stories, but I maybe other, other families feel the same way. So I think we're pretty much uh, um, sharing this, this, um, this amazing journey that is uh, raising our children uh, bilingual. So thank you for the encouragement and for letting us share. Yeah, I think what you just said is interesting because I think we probably all feel that in a way that our own journey is, is small, but Every and I think the book really underscores this idea that every journey is really special in its own way, too. Yes, we're all we we live our own small lives, we have our own small family, but you know, we're all we're also very special in our own way. And I think that comes through in the book because all these special stories come together um, to to create that idea that there isn't only one way to success. In fact, there are many, many, many different ways, and all of you are a testament to that idea. So, uh, okay, let's continue with Deepti. Hi, everyone. Sorry, I have to leave soon, but first, I want to say it was so so great to see everybody's just meet everybody in this virtual space because you know, as some of you have said. It's such an isolating experience to raise um, bilingual, multilingual kids. And I discovered Adam's blog years ago by chance, just like in the crazy state, trying to find any resource, any something, ideas. Um, because um, anyway, but, so I grew up in India and I have a son who's nine now. And uh, uh, when he was born, I, it's not something I thought about before, but when he was born, I decided, oh, I have to speak to him in Hindi. And you know, it, many of the experiences that we share happened. Uh, the thing that I think I have done um, is that he and I, my son and I have a weekly podcast that we do and we make up Hindi stories and just kind of sentence by sentence. And I, because I wanted him to express himself uh, in, in not just the daily activity way but also his ideas and his thoughts and his creativity in Hindi. And so we have 30, um, 300 plus listeners every week. And we had taken a break in August, but all the listeners came back now that we're mm -hmm. back. Um, so in, uh, we are in story number 11, I think. In the book. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> a bit handy. Story number 11. <laughs> yeah. And I am just, it's so gratifying, you know, to be part of this small group uh, with you because when you're go going on the journey, it never feels like you're succeeding. So even to say it's a success story feels like, oh, but I have so many more years to go. <laughs> it's not over yet. And I really feel inspired, Adam, by um, your continued stories with your kids that you share and all the resources, because I know that even when I falter, I can come back to those tools and start. 
because life gets busy and it's not always possible to keep at it. Um, but, uh, you know, my son goes to a Spanish immersion school, so he's also learning Spanish. And I think it's just, um, as a parent for me, I know it's important to receive this encouragement that you constantly provide through your forum and this book and meeting all of you. So thank you and God bless us all. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, it's my pleasure. And well, thank you for saying so. Um, it's, it, as Victor said, it really is a privilege to be able to connect with so many interesting and inspiring people. Um, so I think those three, Victor and Deborah and Deepti, I know you have other obligations. So when you do need to leave, that's fine. And, you know, just wave goodbye at that time. Thank you. Um, Thank you, everybody. Bye. Sure. Sure. Okay. Okay. So let's continue then. And I thought maybe now we would simply go through the book, whoever is here with us, uh, starting with the first story of the book, and that is Marissa, <laughs> right? So story number one is about Marissa. I was going to say, that's an easy one to remember. I was going to say, <laughs> my story is like 10 or 11. Like, nope, no my, <laughs> my And I believe, Adam, correct me if I'm wrong, I was the first person you interviewed for the book. I think you're right. That was before oh. my trip to Europe. Yes, yeah. that's correct. I interviewed you. The, There's a lot of firsts. First. <laughs> a lot of firsts here. That's right. Um, well, uh, I'll try to be more or less brief. So thank you everyone for sharing your experiences here. I'm like everybody else. Um, when my daughter was born in 2016, um, I grew up in Spain, so uh, I knew Spanish was a language she was going to speak, like we say at home, yes, oh, yes. So she, she had no option but to speak Spanish, but I had no clue about how to do it or where to start. Or anything. I mean, intuitively, intuitively, I thought, well, I had to talk to her in Spanish. That's that's for sure. But beyond that, I had no idea about what what to do. And um, I'm a single mother by choice. So when I started reading the Opal, this and that, I'm like, what's Opal? I had no idea. There was all this lingo. I was completely unaware of, and I thought, well, I guess they will have to change the terminology because it's not one part in one language, it's one part in multiple languages. I didn't even know if there was a word, <laughs> a word for that because I'm the source, um, language source for um, Spanish, which is my mother tongue. Uh, back, back in the day when I was young and pretty, um, I studied some German. So I hadn't thought about German for like 20 something years, and I'm like, should I begin with this? Like, well, I'm already making the effort for Spanish, so why not? So with my very limited German, I'd started talking to her, reading to her. Um, and then one day I was like, okay, two minority languages. Why don't we do a third one, French? Um, the issue with French is I do not speak it at all. I don't have a big background in French. And yet I'm trying to be proactive and uh, nurturing everything um, uh, like the study of knowledge of French. And uh, my, uh, right now, I, I always tell, I'm like the crazy cat lady, but without the cats. I, I decided to uh, foster or try to uh, introduce her to Chinese. And I mean, with French, I can, you know, pretend that I can speak it. I know it's Spanish, you know, I can understand words, but Chinese, believe me, I have like zero. Idea. So when I, I actually uh, pretty much like the, the, um, found your blog uh, your, and your first book completely by chance, that was a life changer. Uh, for example, uh, because she was a baby at that point, she was attending music classes, all the music and the songs she listened to were in English. Uh, we, uh, I used to play English songs in the house. And then I read your book and I'm like, that's it. That's it. No more English in the house. That's out of the way zero English and to this day to this day we stick to that to mm -hmm. that we made some exceptions during the lockdown because she was getting literally zero um uh, contact with English and I didn't want her to lose everything that she had already learned but after she went back to her regular activities went back to zero English in the house and she knows and now she's in kindergarten she goes 
mommy, can I sing the song that the teacher told me? Like, remember, we sing everything else in the house in every single language, not in English. And then she <laughs> she sings something, something, something else. I have to say that um, also it's such a great idea to put a face to the names I've uh, uh, I've read so many blogs and many comments that you've written in the forum, like, Amy, thank you so much for tagging me in every sort of the post that you do. I still have to figure out how to tag <laughs> or make it. I know that I've um, had some exchange with you as well. Um, uh, Miss Pena, I already have your book, so I'm doing what I can. <laughs> And doing with like, <laughs> to choose my little one some Chinese. And um, like you mentioned in the story, it's a lot of perseverance and sticking to it. Uh, most of the days uh, I, ha I have the feeling I don't know what I'm doing or if what I'm doing is the right thing to do. But the only thing that I do is like, I have to keep going, I have to keep going. Sometimes it feels like she's making progress. Sometimes it feels like, what the hell am I doing? <sighs> but like two weeks after that, she starts reading in Spanish and she starts reading in German. And as of the other day, she it was so shocking. She read something in Chinese. I'm like, how the heck did you do that? Like, <laughs> how, how you learn? How, how did you learn to do that? And then I figure out it had like the Romanized translation uh, and transcription below. And since she can read uh, uh, Roman characters in Spanish and other languages, that's what she was reading. I'm like, <laughs> um, I'm doing something okay. <laughs> I'm not doing everything wrong like I think half half of the time. So. It's it's uh, an exhausting journey. So uh, I think most of the days I think I'm not doing enough. I'm not providing equal amounts of input in all the languages. Sometimes it's beyond my capacity to do so. But in the long run, I I see slowly but surely that she's using the she's using the languages. I we were in uh, and I promise I finished now. We were in the um, playground yesterday. I was so shocked to see her go back and forth in three different languages. There were people speaking Spanish, um, speaking in English. Um, for some reason, she decided to start speaking in German to me. So she was going back and forth, back and forth. And mm. like she was reading the news from the newspaper. Like, I was like, how proud of you I am right now. I, I mean, she couldn't understand what I was feeling. Like, I'm so proud of you right now because I thought I've given her the gift of the opportunity to learn. And it's not only about learning the languages, that's a tool to learn about the culture and to learn so many things. And she's really cool about the culture. She she's discovered uh, the German um, uh, Kuchen culture. And let's say that we are eating a lot of Kuchen um, cake right now, just to celebrate her <laughs> fake <laughs> German, <laughs> German heritage. So that's a little snippet about what I'm doing to uh, um, uh, raise my little one multilingual. And she's five and a half right now. So okay, yeah, yeah. As a yeah. joke, I say I'm already saving money for when she needs therapy later in life after so much confusion with so many languages. But <laughs> <laughs> it's just a joke. <laughs> well, you're doing great. Uh, you really are. You know the mm -hmm. the stories in the book, of course, are snapshots from mm -hmm. two years ago. So your daughter was only three at the time. At the time, yeah. Um, but what you say. And what the book also, I think, emphasizes is that, you know, none of us are perfect and we don't have to be perfect mm -hmm. to to actually generate a lot of progress and a lot of success if we do have perseverance. So, mm -hmm. you know, that's really the bottom line. If we have enough Absolutely. perseverance, we can we can succeed. So anyway, thank you for for what you said. You're welcome. <laughs> Okay, well, number two, the second story in the book is Richard in Xingqing in China. Tell us a little bit about you. Hi, um, let me apologize. My wife uh, had a really, really busy day and she uh, was so tired, so she just left. And I told her that we were up to but she just uh, like <laughs> so was off already. <laughs> so, uh, well, uh, I would like to thank you. Of course, 
to Adam. And also I would like to thank you, thank uh, to one person which I discovered thanks to this book that I know about you is the other Czech because I found, uh, she's not here, right? I, uh, I, uh, I see. And, uh, and only thanks to when I read your book, I found that actually on her website, I found about your website. And that's how I discovered you. And uh, uh, really, uh, there is one thing I would like to say, um, and that's uh, something really important um, uh, to me. I believe uh, you made me a better parent. And uh, I believe your book made me better, better parent. And uh, each time, it's every day. Every day when I know that my daughter is there, she is wherever she is just right now in the Chinese realm. And I know that this little tiny part of the Czech world, which I am giving to her, uh, I need to find find a few minutes at least when, when whatever is happening to be with her. And I realized that actually that's what the father should do. And uh, I believe um, really, I, uh, I just can't express how much I'm thankful for you for making me the uh, good father, better father. Thanks. Mm -hmm. yeah. Thank and you. so the story of uh, us, um, well, we are both musicians and uh, Shin Shin came, <laughs> so, uh, so she woke up and uh, uh, Party. Yeah, just, uh, and uh, I am pianist, and uh, she is a classical singer. We are both classical musicians, and um, we met there in uh, Czech Republic, and uh, then we moved here to China, and we are here already. Almost five and a half. Um, it should be soon six years already. So mm -hmm. quite a, a long time too. And um, uh, once we got pregnant, I was already like considering uh, this, and uh, it was um, like totally natural to me just that I would go with my uh, daughter, uh, going with my own language, with my own culture, and then I was discovering uh, various things, and I was looking at some Czech website, and then I found about your website, as I said, and uh, I got your book, got contact on you, so um, that's how it all started, and um, I was already trying to talk <laughs> to the child when it was still uh, in her mother's belly, and uh, at that time, that's the thing, I don't know if I mentioned in the book, but we all believed that it would be a son. <laughs> So actually, I sort of addressed the, the child as a son because we believe it's it, we, we knew it's really big and uh, uh, we didn't know what sex it would have because that's uh, how it because of the one child policy and other things that uh, it's common to not to know it here. And mm -hmm. I actually found it's great, by the way. Uh, like my parents, they used to not know. And actually, I found it's actually a wonderful thing, by the way, mm -hmm. uh, just uh, that because it was such a great surprise. <laughs> and yeah. actually, what even more interesting is that we all believe it's a son. And then I was so happy to have a daughter, <laughs> which was such a strange feeling. <laughs> but really great. And um, and I started to talk uh, since the moment when I got her because there was a C-section. So I was actually first person, uh, person who uh, carried her after and just started like this and I already call her by her name and that's where it all started and it goes on and the child is uh, able to express um, and understand everything in both languages very well so that's my language Czech and uh, uh, standard Mandarin Chinese and um, it's also started with English in the Yoarian in the uh, kindergarten and actually because we use between us English quite a lot uh, at home. And so mostly I would say uh, our in-between languages uh, that recently Chinese is becoming more and more too, uh, Czech on, uh, almost none. And uh, we recently discovered that actually her passive uh, ability in English is also not that bad because we had a friend, which is a cellist, and uh, he actually knows several languages, but neither Czech nor Chinese, although he lives and works in China. So uh, he actually spoke to her in English and she was able to even reply, which was quite surprising. Uh, <laughs> great, great. Well, your daughter's doing great, yeah. English will be her next language and she yeah. will become trilingual pretty quickly, I think. We believe so, we hope so. <laughs> yeah, yeah. 
Great. Thank you so much, Richard. Thank you, Xing Xing. Uh, okay, well, number four, the fourth story in the book is Esvieta. Hello, everyone. Um, as I have said, I live in Poland. I am a mother of two children. My daughter is six years old. My son is four years old. And when I embarked on my journey towards bilingualism, I was um, experimenting. I never had in mind that this is going to take us where it took us. And mm. uh, when I started speaking to my daughter uh, in English, she was six months old. And after a while, when I noticed that she's starting to respond to me in that language, I started looking through the web. Are there other crazy people like me who <laughs> would consider making their child bilingual, even not being a native speaker of the language. And uh, I noticed that there's uh, lots of places where you can read about early foreign language acquisition and uh, just language learning. But Adam's place was that place to be when, when you want to have a truly bilingual kid. And it was like, like such a discovery. And then I read Adam's first book and I reached out to Adam, that this is just wonderful. This is exactly what I'm doing. And that I finally found my community. So I'm also so grateful here to see all of you because uh, it gives such a huge sense of belonging and that, that there's more of us. So, mm -hmm. and this is something that really shown me that this is um, a really great community in Poland right now. I'm meeting lots of uh, people who are raising uh, kids in intentional bilingualism, and mm -hmm. um, we even have like cross country play dates, which is wonderful because you know there are other children who who are just like my kids and they they just have a common language and my kids never ever have been to a country where english would be spoken as as the lang common language and then suddenly uh, it's just a, a story from the past month uh, some long forgotten family of of ours pops up uh, we we reached out to part of our family who emigrated to canada 100 years ago and they came over to Poland to visit us. And suddenly they come to, to our home and they see my kids and they are, oh my goodness, they speak English. Like they would be raised in an English speaking country. So this is uh, also another, you know, it was just living proof to me that what I'm doing makes sense. Uh, so as, as, as I've said, I speak English to my kids. My husband also joined me uh, on the journey. He's also speaking English to my, to my kids. Actually, the whole idea uh, came from the fact that my dad, when I was little, he spoke some English to me. He had mm -hmm. a different approach. He never had in mind intentional bilingualism. Actually, it was uh, in the 80s, 90s. That term didn't exist then. Actually, no one paid attention to something like bilingualism. You either knew languages or you didn't know. And my dad just decided to speak to me uh, when we went out for walks. And he made me read some textbooks in English. And that was sufficient for me to, to get a, like a jump start into the language. And then later on, when I had my own kids, that's how the idea popped into my mind. Mm -hmm. My dad did it, so I can do it too. Mm -hmm. I can take it a step further. And right now, actually, that's also a recent development. I'm taking that one step further. I've uh, joined um, a company who's like um, a public sector company who's embarking on a huge R&D project on having intentional bilingualism taken to a national level. So hopefully, wow. hopefully we'll have uh, this project. It's called Bilingual Future. It's already running in uh, in kindergartens, but we'll, I hope that it will be part of like a national curriculum that children will have the chance of being mm -hmm. bilingual, no matter whether they are born to a, a mixed nationality family or whether they are just like my family, you know, single nation, but still it's such a blessing to know so many languages that yeah. why not? Why, why not give them the, the chance? So... <laughs> 
<laughs> this is ah, and well recent development uh, my my daughter is really eager to learn spanish my son alongside so uh, i recently recorded this kind of interview for for my blog it's not yet published with her and i asked her uh well so how many languages would you like to know and she said you know i'd like to know every single language of the world <laughs> <laughs> so um, I'm afraid that the stakes are high here. <laughs> I'm facing a big challenge. So yes, I guess so. Right now, Spanish is is the big challenge because uh, my my knowledge of that language faded away over the years, and I'm basically learning it together with my children. Well, you're doing fantastic. Um, the whole family is, and your influence is really growing as well because of your experience. So congratulations. Thank um, you so much. And thank you again. for the opportunity to, to be part of your book and to meet oh. all, all of you guys. It's I already received some messages. Some of you reached out to me and it's just brilliant to see someone with intent well any kind of bilingual bilingualism but intentional bilingualism is especially dear to my heart right, right. it's it's tough on the parent yeah yeah absolutely absolutely thank you so much thank you so much okay well the sixth story in the book i believe is alex and Gianluca, right? Oh, he's sorry that he's not here at the moment. He's doing crowd management upstairs. I'm not sure if you can hear that. <laughs> Baby elephants. They've, um, they're having a great time um, playing a game in Italian. They have um, killed their sofas upstairs. All of the cushions are off and there's a massive, they're a huge tower of them and a big fort and um, yeah, a lot of noise. So. <laughs> <laughs> Oh yeah, it's just so great to put um, to meet you all and put uh, faces to names. And it's Adam. It's always such a always such a pleasure. Uh, and I always feel whenever um, I read one of your books or the blog or uh, an email from you or, or speak to you that I always feel a renewed sense of enthusiasm for our bilingual journey. So thank you. I think we all mm. feel like that. You're just uh, cheerleading us all um, along our different pathways. Yeah. <laughs> the virtual pom-poms <laughs> it was it was really really it was really lovely to have you stay I feel very privileged that we um saw you in person especially after the madness that has been the last uh, couple of yeah yeah almost two years now isn't it mm -hmm. um and uh, it was uh it, it was a great opportunity really for uh, Johnny and I to re reflect because you don't often do that when you're on your journey you just um raising young children and just focusing on um um your languages and how and and and, and life and it you don't we didn't really sit and reflect on how um how far we'd come and also i remember in our interview adam um so i'm the majority language parent and johnny is the minority language uh, parent and he makes everything look so easy He's, we, he's, I've never heard him speak a word of English to the children. Uh, and it's actually, it's hard work being the minority language parent. Mm -hmm. it, it really is. And he, um, he does such a great job. And I've just, uh, I, you know, it was, it was really good to, to reflect on that. Um, and I, I, so I knew that the, it wouldn't be um, an easy, and necessarily an easy journey. Um, and I want, wanted to support him uh, as much as possible. It's really important to me that our, um, Marco and Ornella, who Marco is seven um, and Ornella is five, uh, just really, really important uh, to both of us that they uh, speak and read and write English and Italian equally. Uh, and we've also introduced some Spanish as well, but it's main, our main focus is um, Italian and, and English. That was always really, uh, really important. Um, and uh, I, when I was pregnant with Marco, I set about trying to just to fill um, our home, create this like amazing um, bilingual environment. And I couldn't really, I'm a designer, I couldn't really find much. So I started designing things for Marco 
uh, myself and then um, uh, Lilolo was born, um, which has been a little bit quiet recently, but I will, um, <laughs> I'll start being noisy again soon. <laughs> I uh, started creating bilingual products um, for Marco and Ornella and other children around the world. And it's just been, it's, it's been a really great journey to be on, but it, it's so, um, it is so, projects like this, Adam, and all your work are so, so helpful because you can, um, it does take a lot of energy, whether you're uh, wherever you are and whatever you're doing, however you're approaching it, it does, and you can um, start to, without realizing it, you lose your enthusiasm and it's just great to connect with everyone again, read your book, Adam, and feel, yeah, fired up and we're changing the world. Excellent. <laughs> Well, we are. I mean, we're changing our own family's world and our family ripples out into the world, you know, beyond us. Our kids will have their own influence on the world, too, through their own lives and, you know, the language ability that they have. So great, great. OK, the ninth story in this book is Amy's story. Uh, hello, everybody. Um, I'm Amy, and uh, I'm actually French, in spite of the name. <laughs> and uh, I was uh, well, I was born in France, but I was actually raised in Spain uh, as a kid in an English school to make it even more <laughs> strange. Um, and uh, when I came back to France, I met my Spanish husband here, and uh, we decided to raise the kids in our three languages. Uh, at the time, because I'd been um, brought up in an English school, I, I'd been brought up with loads of multilingual kids, and uh, I'd never read anything about it. And uh, when my eldest uh, just replied in French, uh, it, a bit of Spanish, and if I was lucky, maybe a bit of English from time to time, um, I started getting really uh, concerned, especially when I was pregnant with my second daughter, because I started thinking this is not going to work. The second one is going to follow the, the leader, basically the eldest. And uh, that's when I finally uh, started reading up on the topic. And I realized that the approach we were doing was just a big mistake. At the time I spoke English to my daughter, my husband spoke Spanish and the three of us together, we spoke French. And that was the big mistake. The majority language at home just could not work especially with my daughter. So it depends on the kids, but uh, I mean, every family is different. Every child is different. And with mine, it just was not going to work. My uh, eldest likes the easy way out of things more than a lot of other kids. <laughs> and French was the easy way out. So one day uh, we, when we finally read up uh, and I realized I started speaking to her in English from morning to, uh, till the evening and uh, I didn't speak a word of French and my husband knew there was something weird he was looking at me because I was speaking English to him because he understands it and uh, he was thinking what is going on here and at the end of the day she started replying in English and he and he looked at me and the penny dropped and uh, he, we knew that uh, we had to change so we moved from that awful kind of configuration to a majority language at home so I stuck to English, he stuck to Spanish, and no French, so everything was out. And I was quite uh, drastic, uh, I got to quite extreme characters. <laughs> no, no more French telly, no more radio, no more French books, nothing. No, even the toys, I started clearing the toys, the electronic toys that spoke French out, everything. And uh, a lot of people thought maybe I had gone a bit nuts, um, but it worked. And um, that was in August, roughly. And uh, by December, we traveled to Spain for Christmas to see my, my in-laws. And it was absolutely magical. She finally spoke Spanish to my in-laws and I could tell they were very emotional. And for me, it was a very emotional moment. So uh, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That, that was really, um, uh, you know, the turning point and the little one followed, obviously. Um, and the little one is a bit more, um, depends on the character, she's got a different character, so she understood that the rule now is there's no French at home and uh, she follows that and the eldest one knows she has no choice now anyway. Um, so that was our story, so the, the conclusion I, I've drawn from that, read up on the topic, 
uh, create a community. Thank you, Adam, for your amazing community uh, that I've discovered and that really helped me through uh, the tough bits and really inspired me. Thank you for your book, Maximize, well, both of them, but Maximize Your Child's Bilingual Ability is my uh, Bible of um, um, bilingualism. And it really, mm. really helped me through. Um, so I really read up on that. And uh, raising bilingual is a lifestyle. So please uh, take responsibility for it. You want to raise bilingual, go for it. Even if you have to speak in a foreign language on the street, I know how hard and daunting it is, but uh, it has to be done. And uh, there's no time to be tired in the evening after a day at work. I totally sympathize. I speak my mother tongue all day long and in the evening I've got to speak. Well, English it is like my other mother tongue, but still sometimes it's an effort. Or oh, Spanish, sometimes and I have to uh, speak to my husband, but we all have to make an effort. So that's the conclusion of this hour of adventure at least. Well, Amy, your efforts have really paid off with your kids. And I think for many other families, because your energy really moves out into the world mm -hmm not only at the Bilingual Zoo Forum, but through your blog, through Instagram. So, you know, you're really passing on your experience and your success, I think, to many other families. Well done. Thank you. It's yeah, uh, yeah. counterbalancing all the energy I didn't do before. <laughs> <laughs> now I'm putting all the efforts uh, and also uh, trying to let people know you have to make the effort. It doesn't happen yeah. on its own. So. Exactly, exactly. Mm. Okay, thank you. Well, you're in Paris, and we have someone else in Paris, and that's Mike Keen, and she is the 13th story. Mike Keen? Hi, everyone. So I'm from Germany originally, from Bremen, as you might see in my background. And uh, well, I moved to Paris uh, about 20 years ago, but I'd studied in France before and also spent a year in Quebec. And I'd been interested in bilingualism since, well, actually, since before I went to Quebec as an exchange student. And I was lucky to live in an English-speaking host family and go to a French-speaking school. And well, when I went there, I thought everybody in Canada was bilingual because that sort of was my geography teacher had said. And <laughs> somehow that wasn't, the whole, that wasn't the thing, but my host family was bilingual and and I, I continued with languages after that. And, and when I was studying, I was also studying in a bilingual program. And for my diploma thesis, I found a subject of uh, uh, bilingualism in kindergarten or how, how it worked in the border area between Germany and France. Mm -hmm. And so then I visited kindergartens there on both sides of the border that introduced the, the other language in, well, in more or less effective ways, let's say. And that was a really interesting experience. And uh, from then on, I knew, or maybe even earlier, that when or if I ever had children, no matter where, where I lived, I wanted them to be bilingual. And then later, I ended up here in Paris. And uh, my husband, he is monolingual French with, a, well, with some understanding of, of German now. Uh, he was on board right away, even though he knew he would have difficulties following whatever was going on as soon as we were speaking German, but he was on board from the moment I mentioned it, and uh, he's been very supportive, and he's done with us lots of trips to Germany, usually he's the one driving, <laughs> <laughs> and uh, spending all the time with my family who don't speak French, so it's, it's a really big cheers to him who's been supporting me a whole lot, and well, our daughter is uh, 11 now, can she come over? And uh, she, we've been very lucky to get her when she was uh, five and a half, when she was six, to get her into a bilingual school with a program for German native speakers. So she has uh, five hours of class in German for native speakers every, every week and come on. So. Hi. Hi, Lana. Hello. And uh, well, we only speak German together and we speak French as a family, but uh, she's really great about it. And she, she only ever speaks German to me. And sometimes when I get mixed up and start dressing her in French, she said, hey, mom, speak German to me. <laughs> okay. 
Great, great. Well, she's doing so well, isn't she? And she's getting so big now. When yeah, she was, she's catching up with me. She's almost as tall as me. Oh, it's amazing. It's amazing. It's been two years since I was there. Okay. Well, thank you so much, Mikey. Um, so the 14th story in the book is Isabella's story of yes. her family. Hello, hello, everyone. And it's so lovely to hear everyone's stories. It's so fascinating. I mean, it's just incredible to to hear how much we have in common. Many people have said this already, but I think having this community of people who have a similar goal and a, a similar experience is so important. Um, and my experience, you know, I have, I have two boys, we live in the UK, but I'm from Poland and I do want my kids to, to be able to speak Polish. And I found a lot of difficulty with, with raising my children, even though now I'm listening to you all, I realize how, how lucky we are. We have a really vibrant Polish community here in the UK. This morning, I have to tell you the story of uh, Colin the Caterpillar. I went to a Polish club in Loughborough where we had a, a coffee morning and, you know, there was about 50 people there and I won this cake in, in a charity lottery. So this is where Colin came from. And we have a, <laughs> we have a, we have Polish uh, Saturday schools, which is wonderful because children can really learn Polish as a second language. But every time I speak to parents about this, they, they always tell me it, it is a difficulty and it is a problem. And these things, you know, are very common. Children are, they don't want to speak the minority language. They answer back in, in English. Uh, they speak English instead of speaking Polish, you know, it, it, it's the same problems over and over again. So this is, that, that's why it's so important to share positive examples and positive stories, uh, like, like in your book, Adam. Uh, so in, in my day job, I also, um, I also write uh, about raising bilingual children and uh, I help with our Polish bilingual bookstore. Uh, and we are also a proud publisher of Adam's um, Maximize, Bi Maximize Your Child's Bilingual Ability in Polish, which was published last year. Um, mm. And I think it, it was so, it was really an eye-opening experience to, I read this book so many times, but when I read it in Polish, it was even, you know, it, it even, it was really different to, to hear mm. those ideas again. Uh, but anyway, the, the thing that we struggled the most with the, with the book was the title. We couldn't quite translate, you know, maximize into Polish. But I think this title sums up what you do, Adam, really beautifully, because it, uh, the Polish title is Podaruj dziecku szansę na dwujęzyczność. And podaruj, in Polish, it's a very special gift. It's not just a gift, it's a very special gift. Mm. And for me, the bilingual journey is, is something that we want to pass on to our kids, and it's like a treasure that we want yeah. to give to them. Uh, and I just want to tell you a little story. So I, I come from uh, from Poland and I remember going to Poland uh, to my hometown to Kielce to see my granny uh, and Adam, my, my oldest son, he was about six at the time. So my granny said, let's go and feed the ducks. And she takes out a knife, gets some bread and she says, come on, Adam, you can do it. And I was like, knife, no, no. But she said, no, let him do it. It's okay. He can do it. And he did. He cut the knife. It was fine, obviously. And then they, they went to feed the ducks. Um, and my granny passed away uh, a few years ago. But this is the little treasure that we have, you know, in, in a way of a memory. Uh, mm -hmm. And they had that experience in Polish in our minority language. Mm -hmm. um, so thank you, Adam, for <laughs> writing this book. I know it, uh, it's not an easy process when we were uh, in the process of publishing this book, I was pulling my hair out and I was reading it over and over. Uh, but I'm so pleased that it's here because yeah. I, I know it's helping other parents to, um, to overcome those challenges. Um, 
that are so common. They are really common. So it's so important, uh, the work that you do, the blog that you write. Um, and I always tell to parents as well, think about your why and think about what's going to happen in the next five or 10 years if you don't continue your, you know, your bilingual journey. And for me, I was writing a blog about this uh, a long time ago. Adam was about maybe seven at the time. And I was thinking, you know, when he when he's a teenager, is he is he ever going to write a letter to me or a text or even a text message? Mm -hmm. And now I have to share my success with you. He goes to he goes to secondary school. He does have his own phone. And if he texts me, it is always in Polish. <laughs> so, uh, so that's, that's my success. Uh, that's great. Yes. So that's that's it. And I would, you know, I would love to connect with uh, with everyone. So um, please, you know, feel free to connect with me. I know Elspieta, but Alex, I would love to maybe have a chat with you because it's so it's so inspiring to hear other people's stories. So thank you, Adam. Yeah, and what you say about sharing, you know, I think we can all share our experiences in, in, in our own special ways. And it really does make a difference to other families in this very meaningful way. So I just encourage all of you to continue sharing, you know, your experience and your success um, in the ways that are best for you. Um, and that leads us to uh, story number 15. Adam, That's Tatiana. Adam, excuse me. I'm sorry. We yeah. just want to say bye. Okay. Bye, Deborah. Bye, Frank. Bye, bye Garrett. Okay. Bye, guys. Garrett, Garrett wants to share this book here that has been a joy also to read together as a family. Oh, great. Great. Yeah. Okay. Thank you for all. So nice to see you. Thank you. Nice to see you all. Have a great day. Okay. Bye bye. Bye. Okay. And Tatiana, you are in California. You are just having an early morning, and I'm having a very uh, late night. I know. And I apologize. My kids are probably asleep or watching morning cartoons, which okay. I hope it's not in English, but it might be. <laughs> right. Um, our journey is slightly different in that. It's not our first journey. Um, I was born in Russia, but uh, we left when I was my 10th birthday, actually. Um, and fairly quickly, both me and my older sister um, started to lose our native language. And my parents made it a goal to keep it before it was popular, before it was a thing. Um, they've always made a very concerted effort to make sure that we continue to speak Russian, we continue to read in Russian um, and appreciate Russian culture in general. Um, but because we didn't live in highly immigrant communities, it was always a struggle for them. And there were a lot of less than kind words that I used when talking to them about the matter as a child. So it's interesting to grow up and, and gain appreciation for what they did. Um, mm -hmm. I try to find the best books and scour the best resources and it takes a lot of my time. And now I realize that my dad didn't just pull a book out of his back pocket. There was a lot of effort spent on finding that book. Mm -hmm. um, so when my daughter was born, I wanted for them to know my dad who doesn't speak English as well as I do, uh, and to know my mom and whose English is better. <laughs> um, so now I have two girls, they're 12 and nine. Um, and it was a challenge. It was a challenge at first because I didn't feel like my own native language was up to the job because I was an English dominant speaker at the time. Um, and slowly but surely, with a lot of support, gentle nagging from my husband, who is a monolingual, um, I got the strength to actually start speaking Russian to my daughter. And we've been getting better together. Um, and I think that's important to know for especially the, the speakers 
of a different language, the intentional bilinguals, because they think they aren't good enough, but they have to realize that a lot of us natives are also not good enough. Hmm. Uh, but we make do and it, it just seems natural, but it isn't always. Mm -hmm. um, I, my story is 15 and I think it's called Progress Grows Over Time from Failure to Failure. Um, and I think on a day-to-day -day basis, I feel like I'm failing. Um, there's always something I should be doing. There's always something that I am trying, but is just not getting the positive feedback from my kids that I expected. Uh, for example, I loved Adam's idea of captive reading. Isn't that awesome? Like, it was great. I loved it. It was the best thing. It just did not work in our house. I think our bathrooms were too big or, mm. you know, I don't know what it is. It just didn't work. Um, so it's, as I have a 12 year old, I've come to realize that a lot of raising a child is really individual uh, and you have to trust your gut and try a lot, a lot of things and to find that thing that will work. Um, and now uh, when my child was five, my oldest, Natalie, we signed her up for um, dual immersion school. So she's learning Spanish in school. And it was great because the Russian community is not always supportive of those who are weak bilinguals that aren't as dedicated um, to the Russian language as they should be. Whereas the international community of our school is just so positive. There's so many bilingual kids. There are the families all cheer each other on. Um, and so now she has the Spanish and with Spanish she's watching telenovelas. They're both, I mean, that's what I'm hoping they're watching downstairs, the Spanish or Argentinian Disney telenovelas. Um, and it's actually working. And that's um, kind of what I, hope to give them something that they enjoy doing that is actually making their language better. And mm -hmm. sometimes it succeeds and sometimes it doesn't. Um, my struggle right now is my oldest, and I think a few of you have that tween and teenage age. Um, she started middle school and the homework has gotten so heavy and the time has gotten so short. Mm -hmm. um, and that's when I look back at your blog, Adam, when you were blogging about it with your daughter and I'm like, oh, that's what you meant. I see now. Mm -hmm. um, so I'm hoping it, it's nice to have that, those guide stills to know that it gets better because I know that without your blog, I don't think I would have been where I am today. Um, but the first like the strongest blog entry that I remember and I don't remember the name but it started with you are not alone um and that has I think been that's what I try to remember when the children are throwing a tantrum when they don't want to speak any other language but English like you are not alone there are others and they are succeeding and so each one of you I read your entries and I say if they can speak English in France, then surely we can speak Russian in California. <laughs> so, thank you all for being my inspiration. Well, speaking of inspiration, um, I don't know if you've seen Tatiana's guest posts at Bilingual Monkeys. She wrote some wonderful guest posts, I think earlier on when her children were younger, and so anyway, if you haven't read them, um, they're, they're really quite powerful. And the letter you wrote, it letter, I can't remember the exact title, but letter from a bilingual child, you know, reflecting back on your experience, kind of what you just referred to, you know, you've had these, you know, your experience as a bilingual child, and now your <coughs> children's experience as a bilingual child, and you are the parent. Um, but it's a very interesting and um, thoughtful letter about, about her experience, I think. So thank you. Thank you for those two. Um, well, we have a couple more people to speak with, don't we? And story number 17 is Marta and Jens in Germany. Yeah, hi. So I'm from Spain. Uh, but I came to Germany to study, then we met, and then I stayed here. 
And before we had kids, we were always already talking uh, Spanish and German at home, and we would mix from one language to the other. And then for me, it was uh, I knew I wanted my children to speak Spanish. I thought it would be easier than it has been, but I think many of us have this experience. You think you just talk in your language, and it's all that it needs, but it's of course a lot more. Our mm. kids are now 12, 9, and 6, and I always wanted them to be fully bilingual. So I wanted them to be able to write and read and talk like a Spanish kitter age in Spain, and I'm very happy where we are now. Um, at the beginning, we, we did Opol. I was talking Spanish, and Jens was talking German, and at some point, uh, it changed and Jens would talk either Spanish or German with the kids because I'm lucky that he all is also very proficient in Spanish. And um, when our oldest was about a year and a half, I wanted that he sees that there are more people speaking Spanish, that it's not just mommy. And since there were not any Spanish activities in our city, I started them. It began all in our living room back then with the Spanish people I knew that, or, or Latin American people also that had children uh, of his age. And this group that we started uh, 12, 14, 12, no, 11 years ago, it's still running. And now there are a lot of families in it. And we did also a lot of things uh, over the years. So like um, every time I met someone that spoke Spanish and, for example, could uh, we, we had, for example, a father that could uh, play the drums and then we organized a drum workshop in Spanish for the kids. Or I met um, a, girl, a woman that was, that could, uh, his, um, her parents were Spanish and he was, he was doing guided tours of the forest. And I asked him, could you do it in Spanish for our children? And she did it. Mm -hmm. And over the years, we have done a lot of uh, such things. Every time I knew someone that spoke Spanish, I was always thinking, what could he do for our community? <laughs> what could, <laughs> or we organized storytelling in the library in my neighborhood in Spanish for the children. And or we did also a sport group for little children in Spanish. So over the years, and I think that made that my children had friends in Spanish and this these other kids could also speak German, but since they were doing something together in Spanish, somehow they spoke Spanish between them. Um, and we go on vacation with 150 other Spanish people. And we, and we always try to go to Spain as much, as much, as often as we can. Of course, now with the pandemic, it was not as before, but yeah. Yeah, let me add, uh, for me, it's also fun to be part of that uh, exercise uh, and um, adventure um, because, um, for example, today we're meeting so many lovely people. What an interesting experience. And uh, also, uh, yeah, we are happy to uh, go um, often to Spain and, uh, and it's so exciting to be uh, uh, living between the cultures and uh, meeting so many friends from, from all abroad. And uh, that really enriches um, your life. Mm, mm, mm. Yeah, and I have to say, having Adam here made me what Alice was also saying made made me reflect on our journey, and also made me see how important in our case was that Jens was always so supportive for my bilingual journey. Because before Adam visit, I was thinking it was my job as minority language parent. But uh, after talking to Adam, it made me realize uh, how lucky I am that, that we are a team in this bilingual yeah. journey, even though he's a majority language parent, but we are into this together. And I think the children feel this and it also, and I'm very happy to say my three kids, they feel really bicultural. So they feel they say they're Spanish and they say they're German, so they, they feel proud of both their cultures. And when they're alone, they speak Spanish with each other. And they speak Spanish to each other still at, at the... And sometimes, now I have the problem, a lot of times we have German friends who can speak Spanish and they're speaking Spanish all the time. And the German mm -hmm. friend is, of course, not understanding anything, but somehow I don't want to tell them speak in German, but because it's so many years that I have said speak Spanish. 
<laughs> and then I, I start translating for the, for the German friends and my kids still speak Spanish. And all their best friends know the basics in Spanish. All their best friends can count and say hello, thank you, <laughs> bye, good morning. And now, for example, the best friend of my oldest now took Spanish in, in middle school, which also makes me very proud. Yeah, that's fantastic. I, you know, when I was with your family, I was so impressed. I mean, y your teamwork, as you say, and your incredible efforts to create community, uh, it was really remarkable. So I really, when I wrote your story, I really wanted to emphasize that idea um, that you can create your own community and from something small in your home, it really expanded out into the city in an incredible way. So congratulations. And we have one more person to speak with, don't we? With some older children. And that's story number 23, and that's Amanda. Hi, what an honor to be here. And then, you know, the power of the community. I think um, Adon and I, we met on the blog. I think during the time we both just started a blog for um, kind of, um, um, document our journey. So thank you very much, Adam, because I feel like every time I look at Adam's work and also his post, and then I remember one time he wrote, be very serious, but also be very, very playful. And I was like, yes, Adam, I'm so happy. I feel like that's exactly what I want to do. And I don't, don't think I can handle all this by myself. Now I have somebody mm -hmm. else who's doing the same thing. I think passion is contagious. I think just being here, seeing all of you here, I think it's it's contagious. And I think we are making being bilingual um, a family lifestyle. So all the people around us can see, wow, this is a lifestyle. And uh, I think that's so important. I Because we've been overseas for many years, we were in, um, in Turkmenistan, then in Canada, and then in Quito, in Ecuador. So I don't really have a Chinese community. And then when we uh, relocated to Hawaii, and then my kids are a little bit older, and I realized that if I don't want to take them to the traditional Chinese school, what can I do? But I don't have a community. So I decided to take a Mandarin Chinese to my daughter's a preschool. And that was phenomenal because I couldn't believe how other kids who actually have no Mandarin background got so interested in Mandarin. And then I realized that, wow, this is something I can do to help others and at the same time help myself. I feel I've heard so many stories today that it's very touching me because I think where it all started from helping ourselves, then we start to helping others. And then mm -hmm. I think that's where creating a bigger community because of Adam, you know, put us all together so we can share our stories. As I was listening to all of you, I actually feel very emotional because my kids are older. Um, my daughter just turned 16. My son is going to turn 18 in a few days. Mm -hmm. um, they're fully bilingual in Mandarin Chinese and uh, English. And they're, they're literate in Mandarin Chinese as well, but I won't say in the very high level, but uh, I can tell you one story a few years back when we went back to Taiwan for a summer summertime, we were having beef noodles in a department store underneath the, the food court. And then suddenly my daughter looked at me and said, mom, this is beef noodles and the company name. I was literally just stunned. I didn't ask her to read anything and she just literally just read it. Hmm. I think everybody is saying that sometimes we don't really know what we're doing. And we are saying like, we're not doing enough. I feel that every day, even though my kids are going to be out of the house very soon. I think it's a lot of emotional labor on this journey, a lot hmm. of emotional journey. So emotional. Sometimes I read Adam's story and I'll say, wow, I, 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 can, I can resonate, I can relate. And today seeing all of you, you know, 
even in a virtual in a virtual back you know situation i still feel very, very emotional when i hear your story because because my kids are older so a lot of stories i can relate so well <laughs> um when my son came to me when he was very young second grade first grade second grade, say no done not speaking chinese to you anymore nobody's speaking mandarin mom i'm only going to speak chinese uh english from now on and I even, I know like there's more things I need to do. So I'm here today. Every year we've been doing a um, global education program in the library, no matter where we are in the world, we've been doing this for the past 15 years. Um, they now are my helpers when we go to the library. They are helping people, helping people about the culture, about connecting the language. I think is a little milestone because they're going to take the, this bilingual lifestyle in their hand very soon. And then there's so much I can do, but it's a gift I have for them, just like each one of you. We're all giving a gift to our children. Mm -hmm. So um, I'm very honored to be able to share the story, my story with, with you all and with other readers. But at the same time, I think I'm so lucky to be able to read your stories and thank you, Adam, for giving us this wonderful community. So keep us moving forward together. Well, you know, Amanda, we're, we're kind of towards the end of our journey. Both of us, our children are very similar in age, right? And yes. uh, I've been saying this more and more. I don't write as much as I used to, I think, in terms of blogging about my experience because my kids are older um, and I'm not in the thick of it like I used to be. Um, and so what I do say to parents again and again these days is really make the most of these younger years because those, you know, they pass so quickly and, um, you know, not only for our bilingual aim, but of course for our, our relationship, our bond with our children. So, um, you know, today has been really, it's, it's way past midnight here and I know we have to to bring this to a close, um, but uh, you know, I could talk on and on and on. Um, you know, this is a subject that when I have a chance to connect with others uh, about this, it just really energizes me in ways that probably, you know, much of my life doesn't in some ways. Um, and there's one more thing I, I did want to say in, in that, you know, I think the motivation really for writing the book in the first place was um, through my experience of the blog and then in particular with the forum when, you know, at the forum, then people could write more freely about their own lives, their own experiences, their own stories. And I started to see those stories and, and I started to be so impressed with the the different kinds of circumstances and challenges that parents were facing and how they addressed them and how they were, you know, what they were doing to continue moving forward and making progress with their kids. And what struck me and, and what struck me today in this experience of us being together for this short period of time is that, you know, we we live such different lives. Our circumstances are so different. And yet in this very deep and important way, we really share this kind of kinship at a heartful level, understand, at a soulful level. Uh, because uh, I've mentioned this before in different ways, but you know, probably most of the people in my daily life, uh, I may or may not be you know, friends with them, but I don't necessarily connect with them as deeply because this idea that I want my children to be bilingual, particularly in my language, you know, to be able to communicate with me is such a deep and central part of my whole existence that I think that's where we feel this kind of kinship. So despite all these differences, and they're, they're extreme if you think about it, because we're in completely different locations, <laughs> we're living in different time zones, our jobs, our families, everything is so different. And yet, 
it's so similar at this very deep and soulful place in our lives. So I think that kind of dichotomy between those two, that it's so different and yet so similar, I just find so fascinating. And I hope, you know, whoever reads the book will come away with that the same sort of impression that how amazing isn't it that we can, you know, and some of you I have met in person, but only for a couple of days. And some of you have never had a chance to meet in person. And yet we can talk like this in a way that is so much, I think, more profound than our, you know, typical daily conversation. So again, I want to thank all of you so much for being a part of this with me. And, um, you know, I don't know where we're all going from here, but I think, again, we'll, we'll always be tied together by the book in some way. And I honestly do hope that I'll have a chance to uh, see all of you in person again on, with some people and for the first time with others. Um, you, you do have an open invitation to come to Japan uh, anytime and you're welcome. Um, uh, the sushi is on me. So uh, I want to thank you, all of you again. And I do want to thank those that were unable to join us um, today. Um, Isabella, is there anything else you wanted to add? Uh, I think um, it's, it's, oh, it's just, I was almost crying when Amanda was talking because it is emotional. Uh, and I think this idea of giving back, you know, we're, we're all sharing. And I think you've all shared your story so generously. You know, we, we don't hold back anything. So we, we share it generously. And I think our children will, will also share this with other people and by giving back to others you know we not only um, create this community but we are also helping them to to have the to maintain the language i'm just going to open this bottle of prosecco <laughs> <laughs> if anyone Go else ahead. wants to make Go a ahead. house well, Adam, I'm what an sorry. impressive round today and what exciting stories. Uh, and uh, let's do again a big round of applause. Uh, that was fantastic. <laughs> and also we brought some good little uh, champagne to have a virtual bring this with you. Toast. Toast. Cheers. Nazdrowie. Cheers. Uh, nice to have you, Anna. Cheers to all of you. Thumbs up. Okay. Chin chin. Thumb ball. Thumb ball. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Both. Um, before Do we, we... open the book? Do you want to hold the book and take a picture? Yes, I was going to say, let's take I didn't a get it yet. Mm. All right, we are waiting. Oh, let, me, let me find oh, my copy. It says. It. Sorry. <laughs> Maybe it's somewhere in between on the way. So we don't have the hard copy yet. <laughs> okay. I have to check that then, Richard. I'll get in touch about that. Thanks. Should I run and get mine? Here it is. Oh, Marissa's coming. Hello. Mm -hmm. And there it is, bilingual success stories around the world. So I hope it is read around the world. And I do think that many people are now reading it. So um, I, I hope it has a long life. And as Isabella was saying, and that many, of, um, many others have said that, you know, this influence, not just through a book like this, but just through sharing our experience and through our children, you know, some days, and I know this has also been said in different ways that, you know, maybe today it feels like, oh, nothing, it, nothing happened, I failed, or, you know, there's no movement. But the fact remains that we continue moving forward. And that energy, that influence really does ripple out into the world. And that will continue on beyond us through our children and perhaps their children. 
and who knows, generations in the future. But what we do matters. It really makes a difference day by day. So I just can I, I encourage all of us to just continue, despite the challenges, despite the frustrations, that we just continue moving forward day by day by day and let life take care of itself beyond that. So thank you. I guess we'll bring this to a close now. I hate to say good night or goodbye, but uh, I know we'll be in touch in different ways. Um, and I'll, I'll be in touch again soon with a group message again about different things. But um, again, thank you so much for, for, for gathering together today. Um, this, this is a really memorable experience for me and I, I'm sure for all of us.